deadly violence in Charlottesville. This is Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon, you're fired. That's what the president's chief of staff said to him today. But while Bannon right now is the latest embodiment of a chaotic White House in crisis, in eight short or long months, depending on who you talk to, there have been plenty where he came from. Today, it's Bannon. We are in an outright war against jihadist Islam, Islamic fascism. But just a few weeks ago, July 31st, this was the face of chaos. Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci, you're fired. The president's a winner, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of winning. I love the mission that the president has. I love the president. I obviously love the country. He's genuinely a, a wonderful human being. I love the president, and I'm very, very loyal to the president. Well, there wasn't much love for this guy, though. This was the chief of staff, gone just three days before the mooch took over. Reince Priebus, you're out. The president has a right to hit a reset button. I think it's a good time to hit the reset button. I think he was right to hit the reset button. Well, just seven days before previous, the president hit the reset button on this guy, the guy who was the face of the president's message and so much ridicule, Sean Spicer, gone. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period. So before Sean Spicer, there was Walter Schwab right here. Walter Schwab, he wasn't hired by the White House, but he's gone. Mike Dubke gone. James Comey, fired. Angela Reed, gone. Katie Walsh, she's out as well. Michael Flynn, of course, gone. And then there is Sally Yates, not hired by this White House as well, but also gone. And Michael Short, we couldn't find a picture of him. And so on and so on. You get my point. Yet nothing has changed. Why? Because the buck stops with this guy, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Think of the upheaval his words and his actions have caused in just the last week. And what a week it has been. Seven nights ago, white supremacists and neo-Nazis march in Charlottesville, Virginia, claiming to be angry about the planned removal of a statue of a Confederate general, Robert E. Lee. But this is what they chanted. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Saturday, mayhem in Charlottesville. Violent clashes between the white nationalists and counter-protesters. A driver rams his car into a crowd, killing 32-year-old counter-protester Heather Heyer. That afternoon, President Trump says this. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides, on many sides. On many sides, outrage spreads over President Trump's failure to blame the deadly violence on white supremacists. Vice President Pence comes to his defense. President Trump clearly and unambiguously condemned the bigotry, violence, and hatred which took place. Well, the president he gets the message by Monday he does saying this racism is evil and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs including the KKK neo-nazis white supremacists and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans and remarkably the next day Tuesday the president says this well, well, I do I think there's blame. Speech. Yes, I think there's blame on both sides. So you look at you notice. look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it. And you don't have any doubt about it either. But and, only and, 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 and if you reported it accurately, you would say. Neo-Nazis started the this. They showed, they showed up in Charlottesville. They showed up in Charlottesville. Excuse me. To protest. Excuse me. They didn't put themselves down as you. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group 
that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. No, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Hmm. The fallout starts immediately. American business leaders abandon President Trump's two business advisory groups, which then collapse. Thursday, two prominent Republican senators publicly questioned the president's competency and moral authority. The president has not yet um, has not yet been able to demonstrate the stability, uh, nor some of the competence that he needs to demonstrate in order to be successful. What we want to see from our president is clarity and moral authority, and that moral authority is compromised when Tuesday happens. There's no question about that. Yet President Trump only seems occupied with calling the removal of Confederate monuments and statues sad and so foolish. Which brings us to where we are tonight. This is where we are. With President Trump possibly attempting to deflect attention away from his roundly criticized response to Charlottesville by firing the man who gave name and oxygen to a new face of fascism, racism, anti-Semitism, hate the alt-right. Let's bring in our panel now. CNN political analyst April Ryan, White House correspondent for Urban, American Urban Radio Networks, political commentator, or con political contributor, I should say, Michael Nutter, the former Democratic mayor of Philadelphia, political commentator Matt Lewis, senior columnist for the Daily Beast, syndicated talk radio host John Fredericks, the former co-chair for the Trump campaign in Virginia, and Robert Kuttner, He's the co-founder and co-editor of the American Prospect magazine, and he joins us via Skype. Good evening. Uh, it's going to be a fascinating conversation, a fascinating hour ahead. Uh, April, uh, going through those cards in the week, I mean, what a week it has been. It has been exhausted. A lot has transpired. What a week. You're at the White House every day. Bannon mm -hmm. is out. But there's, still, there's deep wounds that are far from being healed right now. Yeah. And this is from yeah, everything that's unfolded wounds, in Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah, they're deep wounds. Um, and, and, and I'm going to start with this, Don. I've been watching the coverage all day. Sorry. Um, I'm, yeah, no problem. But I've been watching the coverage all day. And, you know, with the Bannon firing, Bannon is spinning this, and those who are in the Bannon camp are spinning this like it's a great thing. He's got his hands on the weapons. But he was fired. We have to remember. He was fired. And when you're fired and when you leave the White House, you don't have the power you once wielded. Well, typically you don't. We'll see what happens. But he is not in that inner circle. We know that there was a back and forth between, a negative back and forth between Bannon and Jared Kushner, the son-in-law of the President of the United States. We also know that there was a concern about Bannon being one of the problems <coughs> of leaking. So Bannon and his uh, uh, supporters are spinning this like it is a win. Mm -hmm. But this is not a win. But typically when you leave the White House, you, you don't have the, 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 I guess the power, the Washington power that you once wielded. And also, there is a concern, and they're spinning this because they don't want that base, that Bannon base, that Bannon base, the people who were in Charlottesville, uh, some of the other people around the country who support that kind of thing to break away from the president. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make it look good, but it's not. Yeah. And we will see what happens in the next couple, coming weeks, days, what have you. Yeah, Mike, uh, you, you know, Michael, I said that it was it possibly to change the narrative. I mean, but Bannon brought the alt-right into the West Wing. Does this, his ouster, address any of the questions of racism or competence from this president? No, uh, Don. I mean, look, Donald Trump is, what, 70, 71 years old. I was thinking about this the other day. He was 22 at the height of the civil rights movement. Apparently that passed him by, uh, and he has no understanding uh, empathy, anything. He, he has no moral center. But, you know, Steve Bannon, I mean, I don't know how much influence uh, uh, Steve Bannon had on uh, uh, Donald Trump, but he should have sense enough of his own uh, to not do some of the things that uh, he has been speaking directly from his heart. That is very, very clear. So Donald Trump himself uh, is spiraling downward uh, in a vortex 
of chaos and confusion. And unless he changes, he can't fire his way out of the problems that he's having and that this White House and this entire administration uh, is being consumed by unless mm -hmm. he changes. Yeah. It he allows General Kelly to manage up and down, deal with the staff, but a principal. And even and, and I understand and, this. Including a, a, a principal and, has to be managed also. Yeah. Uh, by primarily by the chief of staff and other uh, people around him or her. Well, that's and what I was going to say. Someone has someone has to manage this president because clearly, if you look at Matt, if you look at he doesn't you know, want to be managed. If you looked at the pictures, and this is not everyone, by the way, who has come and gone at the at the White House or in the administration, Matt. When you look at th these pictures, this is a higher number than most modern modern administrations, Matt Lewis, of people who David Gergen talked yeah. about this earlier. I mean, Matt, this is a this wholesale is turnover of your top people in the first seven months. <laughs> this never happens. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, Don, look, I mean, you you showed it to us, right? Don't don't tell us, show it. I mean, the, the pictures, uh, they were right there. And earlier today, Brooke Baldwin didn't just talk about the uh, the staffers, the turnover, but also the turmoil. Mm -hmm. You've had the whole Russia stuff, you know. You've had Donald Trump attacking Republicans like Mitch McConnell, Jeff Flake, his own Attorney General, Jeff Sessions. You've had Donald Trump fail to pass any legislation, any meaningful legislation, including health care reform. That is the state of affairs today. This administration, it's been six months now, enough time to get your footing, is a disaster. And I yeah. think it's time for Republicans to, uh, to admit that. And you know, you showed those videos earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're starting to see that, some senators yeah. walking away. John, uh, what, what do you think? Remember, on the, I hired the, I've got a big brain or a good mind or a good brain. I hired the <laughs> best people. And then all of these people are gone. What does that say? What I'm do you sorry. think of this, John? <laughs> mm. Well, I guess if he's hiring the best people, he should probably hire some of us, right, Don? Let's start there. But look, it's the game on what happened here today. It's game on, and that's about as frank as I can be. You know, the detractors inside the West Wing that are celebrating tonight because they were part of Steve Bannon's ouster, you know, my mom taught me an old saying a long time ago, be very careful what you wish for, it might come true. Mm -hmm. Steve, Steve Bannon's ouster today is a punch in the stomach to Trump loyalists and Trump supporters and this movement that really believe the president is onto something and he's trying to re make well, John, and transform read the Republican Party into something into something that, that they that they've not accomplished. Okay, I want to help you make is, your point. Let me help you make your point because this was Bannon ahead. told the, ahead, the Weekly Standard. He said the Trump presidency that we fought for and won is over. We still have a huge movement, and we will make something of this of this pres this Trump presidency. But that presidency is over. It'll be something else, and there'll be all kinds of fights, and there'll be good days and bad days. But that presidency is over. You say this revolution has been hijacked, right? And you said it's a punch in the gut. Go on. Well, look, it has been hijacked by the establishment and the class of Republican-based donors that all they care about is getting money and their globalist agenda, and that's basically it. Now, the only thing that is over with this presidency is Steve Bannon is no longer in that White House. I'm not sure where Steve was headed with that. I'm sure there's a, a, a degree of frustration he has. But the tr Trump base, Don, and, and, and April, they're not going to sit idly by and see their movement and their and their extension of uh, the victory they had. But Donald Trump's the okay. president. If he I was going to say, John, can I ask you not this? Hold see on, Matt. Hold on, John. <laughs> Matt, uh, John, doesn't the buck stop with the president? There is no, you're not placing any responsibility, no onus, no blame on the man who is sitting in the Oval Office. This is all other people hijacking. It's the media. It's everyone around him. There's no blame on this president? It's all here. The president now has to take the reins and take control and do what he did in the campaign and get his things done. You're not answering my done. question, John. But done, There's the well, president takes no responsibility think, well, in this. Of no responsibility. You know people, people like <laughs> Steve on. Bannon and Ann Coulter, let's say, thrust Donald Trump on us. They pushed Donald Trump on the conservative movement and the Republican Party, and they won 
But the guarantee they gave the voters was, this is a guy who believes in nationalism. This is a guy who believes in populism. This is a guy who's a winner. You're telling me that after six months, he's allowed eight, his administration to be months. hijacked? What kind of a winner? It's actually seven months. It's actually seven months. We've got, eight, seven months. We've got eight months. Okay. We've got seven, seven months, months into it took eight months administration. To okay. Now, what I didn't say was hijacked. Now, don't put words in my mouth. I said you did say that. They're not going to allow it. They're not going to allow it to be hijacked. And a lot of the original Trump loyalists have been tossed out of there. So the president's got to figure this out. He's got three key advisors now, uh, along with his children, that still believe in the core principles that got him in there. And that's uh, his and that's, children uh, are Democrats. Stephen Miller, or, or Kellyanne, Steve, and Hope. That's very, it. He Best has no principles. Republicans. He I, has no principles. He is he is driving an agenda, but he's now. Look, he's now surrounded. What is the agenda? The Wing. agenda has what been agenda? hijacked by distractions. There is no agenda. The, the hijacking of the agenda from the president's own distractions, from wiretapping to confetti to to possibility of the possibility of a tape between him and Comey, all of this other stuff. Right. The president and, and then going back and forth just within the last week on the issue of of Charlottesville. The president is hijacking his own agenda and his own party is now publicly coming out talking about 2020 and the possibilities that they may not want him on the ticket. There have been a so lot of people who have come and gone. A lot of people have come and gone in this White House. The one me? constant, this is the one constant in the White House right, right here, is the President of the United Donald States. Trump. It's Donald Trump. Yeah. So I don't understand how it's been hijacked by everyone. I could, listen, I just say this, this show faltered and I was no longer in the air. I consider and blame everybody. But I am the leader of this show. I would say I could have done a better job. I didn't do a good enough job. The audience wasn't interested in me. I wouldn't blame it on everybody else. Why are you blaming it on everybody else? I don't understand that. I, listen, I, I got to get Robert. Don, Don, we're not blaming it. I, that's, is not, that not? not hang on, hold on, hold on, John. The president. Hold on, John. Did it, what, what did everybody else hear? What did you hear, uh, Michael? Did you hear him blaming it on everybody else but the president? He, Every, it's been it's been captured. Okay, it's stand been, by. They're on an island. Matt, He's what did you hear? He shot himself in the foot so many times. <laughs> it's impossible to understand he can still walk. Matt, what did you hear? <sighs> I think that the you know whether it's guests or Steve Bannon or or what did you, you know, hear John say though? I, I thought maybe I misheard. I thought that it was hijacked. That the campaign okay. had been hijacked. In April, you said as much. Robert, what did you hear? What did I hear? Did you hear? Did. In <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Did you hear him? Because we all thought he said that it had been hijacked and there was no res Donald Trump bore no, re no responsibility for what's happened in his own administration. The establishment. Well, are we talking about Bannon? No, we're talking about John. Because I thought that maybe we, we have been wrong. And I don't want to beat up on John. <laughs> well, you're not beating I'm, up on I'm me. Gonna I, mean, the, the, I, I want to talk about Bannon. Can I talk about Bannon? Absolutely. Because you, you apparently... This furor over Bannon is a, 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 this interview with you. Do you feel partly to blame here? I don't know whether it's blame or credit. I mean, I think he was in the process of doing himself in, and I was fortunate enough to get the phone call uh, that turned out to be the straw that broke the camel's back. But my experience of that phone call was that this was a guy much too full of himself who was kind of out of control who knew that he was probably going down, and if he was going to go down in flames, he wanted to go down with all guns blazing, and didn't have much loyalty to his president. And I think ultimately he got fired because if you're Donald Trump, the one thing you cannot stand is being upstaged by mm -hmm. staff. And Bannon, right. first of all, was getting too much attention. Secondly, was disloyal to his president. And I think the irony here is that uh, Bannon was the architect, as, as you said, Don, of this neo-fascist uh, white supremacist garbage. And so my worry is that with Bannon out of the White House, he is more liberated to be more effective back at Breitbart and to be a kind of a kitchen cabinet advisor to Trump under, uh, you know, uh, w w uh, without any scrutiny from General Kelly or the rest of the staff, and he can continue to play this role of advising Trump. So I think Trump re, tr Trump's at a crossroads. He's got to back off this white supremacy garbage, or as recent events suggest, he may double down on it with Breitbart 
pressuring him to do more of it. Mm -hmm. um, John, why are you shaking John, your head? Can I, no, John, John, can I, I want John to get him because we, I don't want nothing. to think we're beating up. I want to hear from him. Why, why do every conversation we have, we, we now have to bring in the old white white supremacist. This is an absurd. This is an absurd statement that you just made. These people have nothing to do with Trump, the movement, or anything else. The people that came to Charlottesville a week ago were crackpots and crazies and lunatics. David that the Duke. Disavowed. David Duke that, literally that, that said support, thank you. That, 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 told that the he president, supported there's with there's the president. One of the time, that one of the time orders, April 1st. You want to keep bringing it up mm -hmm. over and over and over, April, because that's. That that is all you have. The Democrats have oh, no now you're agenda. targeting me. So you now you're targeting me. Thing, Did David Duke, the former ridiculous. grand wizard These of the KKK, da Trump it's not ridiculous. Else? Excuse it's me. Trump let me, okay, let April, me say this. They're crazy. Let me they're say this. People. Go ahead, Dave. Okay, okay. Well, well they're nuts. Too. But David Duke did say, David Duke did say, Mr. President, you better watch what you say because we are who supported you. Now, do you negate that? Do you say that didn't happen? David Duke, who was a high leader in the KKK, said that. That is fact. That's not myth. It's not conjecture. He said that. And then he supported him with that waffling statement, the last statement that the president made about both sides. So you cannot say Jesus. that I'm creating this. I am only reporting fact, and I'm reporting what is given to us by these leaders around this country. So uh, you need to understand that I'm not having here having an agenda or trying to put words in anyone's mouth. You can run back the tape and see John. April, who the it hell what cares what David Duke says? Nobody cares what this guy says. He's got Apparently a tiny Donald Trump does. following. He's got he's a lot a of people. Man. The people he who are in care what he says care. either. There okay. was a you know, April, woman died, they're John. Nuts, John, I'm not going to argue with you. Okay. I'm not going to argue with okay. you. All right, guys. They are nuts, and I'm glad they're right, nuts, but I'm not going to argue with you. One at a time. I'm not going to argue with you. Robert, I want to bring you back into this conversation because I think your reporting was so important. Bannon contradicted the president on North Korea. Did you want to add anything to what they were saying before we move on and talk about North Korea? No, I mean, I, I just think it's, it's, it's pointless to try and deny that uh, Trump has been legitimizing these fringe people, giving aid and comfort to them, and that they were a big part of his base. Uh, I, I think the, the really complicated thing about Bannon is that uh, Bannon has a whole economic nationalist strategy that is part of his larger strategy, and it, it's one part uh, economic nationalism, but it, it's, it's one part racism. And um, he, in a weird way, thought that he could create a kind of a left-right political coalition <clears throat> by reaching out to me, reaching out to other people who are more on the liberal side, who've been critical of our China policy. But, you know, the idea of, of Trump going into a meeting of the National Security Council and saying, hey, guess what, everybody, I got Bob Kuttner supporting me on China, is delusional. Mm -hmm. And what was just bizarre about this conversation was Here's a guy, if you believe the New York Times story, who already had tendered his resignation under pressure two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he's living in a kind of a fantasy land where he thinks he's still making policy and he's inviting me to the White House after Labor Day. So you wonder what planet these people are living on. And I guess the question is whether Trump, uh, at this crossroads, is going to distance himself from the really creepy neo-Nazi far right Mm -hmm. or whether he's going to double down on it, as he did Tuesday, as he may do in this rally at Phoenix, if it happens, if he pardons Joe Arpaio. And uh, he needs Bannon in a mm -hmm. weird way if he sticks to this course, because Bannon was the architect of it. Yeah. Hey, Mayor Nutter, I want to play. I want to uh, put yeah. something else up more from uh, Bannon from the Weekly Standard. He says, I feel jacked up. Now I'm free. I've got my hands back on my weapons. Someone said, it's, it's Bannon the Barbarian. I am definitely going to crush the opposition. There is no doubt. I built a bleeping machine at, uh, at Breitbart, and now I'm about to go back knowing what I know, what I know, and we're about to rev that machine up and rev it up. We will do. Knowingly, knowing what I know, <laughs> I mean, what do you, what do you mean? It's <laughs> well, first of all, it sounds, sounds like a guy who's maybe holding on to himself, but um, he really does sound a little bit like the nutcase over in uh, North Korea. I mean, I don't, I don't know this man, uh, you know, uh, read the news accounts, um, but he sounds like he's coming off the, uh, coming unhinged or off the rails, much like his former now boss, uh, Donald Trump. But the other thing I want to mention to you, Don, is um, from all accounts, Virtually everyone who has left the White House, maybe with the exception of uh, Jim Comey, 
Donald Trump still stays in touch with these folks. So I think it was April that mentioned, you know, in the White House, out of the White House, he still talks to these people. This stuff, this white supremacy, neo-Nazi, all of that, I believe now we've seen the real Donald Trump on Tuesday. That is in his heart and soul. Mm. He is a right. vacuous vessel that people pour stuff into, mm. and he then amplifies it out uh, to the public. He has no center. Uh, and goes with whatever the last person who talked to him uh, about and then says it. And so we don't ever know what he's going to do. He created his own problems. He continues to create his own problems and then wants to whine about his agenda, which no one on this panel, at least, maybe except for the one gentleman, no one else knows what that agenda is and then dumps on everyone who could possibly help him with his agenda. Yeah. that no one knows about. Matt, I want you to take a look at this. I hope you have a monitor there. This is a, a photo of President Trump on the phone with Putin. This is from January. Everyone in that photo, Priebus, Bannon, Spicer, Flynn, all gone aside from the president and the vice president. And a source says that the chief of staff, Kelly, is not done yet. <laughs> yeah, watch out Sub Gorka, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, uh, it, it's that picture is telling me that's a, a big important moment, and uh, they're all gone, and, and except for you know, Mike Pence and uh, the president himself. And look, I think it's a valid point. Just because, you know, though I, you you have to say uh, just because Steve Bannon is gone doesn't mean that he won't that he's 